Uh, man, I'm a failure. My channel isn't alive. I haven't posted for months. And I don't even have anything to show for it. Is my dream of a filmmaker fading away? Will I lose all my followers? What will be of the Danny Shorter's art channel? Channel. Hmm. Shorter's art channel. Art channel. Channel. Art channel. I have an idea! Hello everyone, it's me, Daniel, and welcome to another video. In this video, I will be making a dinosaur. And no, it's not the Hadrosaurus I started and I've already finished uh, from that dead video trilogy. I unfortunately have no interest in continuing it. But fortunately for you guys, this video is taking on a different format than what you'd expect. I show focus not necessarily on the specifics, but more on the actions. Dan, you haven't even told the audience what you're doing. I'm getting there! What my employee rudely reminded me of is this video's premise. I shall make a dinosaur. But no, not just any ordinary dinosaur. It's a Brazilian dinosaur. So buckle up, fellas, because I'm making the Spinosaurus's tiny cousin, Irritator. And let's just jump straight into it. To start off, I made an as accurate as I could profile drawing of the dinosaur I was about to make, taking some liberties that I think the fossil record allowed me. As you can see, the Irritator I drew had longer legs and a sharper sail. I know that the Spino had stumpy legs, but I don't think that makes the dinosaur less accurate. We haven't yet found the legs of an Irritator, so I think I'll let this one slide. Importing the image into Blender, I got to work on Igor's base model. Yes, I named my dinosaur model Igor. A few hours later, and a few more references, the base model was complete, but we're not done yet. So I imported that model into ZBrush and got to work on that. Instead of showing you a long and unbearable time lapse, I'm just going to show you a compilation of the skull.
a week and a half's worth of work later and I go ain't looking that bad. Obviously he needs to be coloured and read to apologise for animation, but he's getting there. And now for the worst part, re-apologizing. After doing a ton of work on the sculpture, my most hated thing apart from when Blender doesn't obey me... Stop it! ...has to be creating an animatable low poly mesh identical superficially to the high poly mesh. Worst of all, uh, this is one of the most essential parts. If you don't do it right, the model will look like crap when you're animating it. So do your very best when re apologizing And trust me, you're gonna be tired. You're gonna be sweating. You're gonna think that this is insurmountable. But I say keep calm and carry on. If a procrastinating reptile such as myself can do this, you can too. Ah, Dan, it's done. Well, what do you know? It's done. Because we don't want a white blobby T-pose, we're gonna make him look fancy. I start this by applying some dirty vertex colors onto the sculpt's vertex color to highlight edges and creases. Using the bake function in Blender, I bake the superficial detail of Igor's sculpture as well as the sculpture's vertex colors onto the retopologized mesh. Until this point, the way that I've been making Igor was identical to my other dinosaurs. Here's some that I haven't been showing off on the channel. But here, I wanted Igor to be different. I wanted him to look better. I wanted him to look more realistic. And the way that I did that was to first add subsurface scattering, then I added two layers of noise to make it really random, and then I painted the color texture, but not in the normal way, no, no. I wanted to make it so every scale is different from the next. As I'm a professional YouTuber, I completely forgot to record the whole thing, except for the painting of the feet. And as you could see, I was jittering around like there was no tomorrow. And that jittering turned out to be worth it. Look at that. Mwah. Perfection. To not possibly ruin all my texture work, it took around five days or something to make, I made the stripes on a completely different texture. Also, I made the skin based off this Photoshop edit I made on my drawing, which turned out to be worth it, so I really recommend doing so. After doing the roughness and specular maps using painted methods and the diffuse texture respectively, I realize now that I haven't told you yet how I made Igor's eyes. So here we go. Eyes are basically just white veiny balls with an indent in them to catch light. That's also protected by a membrane, so I made a sphere created a flat part to yeah, represent yeah, the iris, yeah, we don't care. Like the point is, I followed the tutorial. So just look up on YouTube, realistic eye blender, and one of those is the one I watched. One thing I made up was the shader for the pupil. So I made the pupil glow in complete darkness and turn completely black in the light. This is just to emulate how animals' eyes glow in the dark, and I think it looked way better than it should. I play around with it too much. <laughs> I think it's really cool. Nightmare. Last eye related thing was this. Uh, since I wanted to make that third eyelid that all birds and reptiles that can blink have, I duplicated a half sphere from the eye, made it grey, and added a noise texture to make it wavy. I personally think it looked awesome. Next is the third most fun part, rigging and weight painting. To keep Igor's armature bone names consistent with my other dinosaur models, I imported my Albertosaurus rig, modifying it and modeling it around Igor's anatomy, adding and removing bones when needed, as well as making some extra bones on the connections of the limbs so that when Igor is posed, his legs and arms and hands don't look broken when I'm weight painting. Speaking of, I think the weight painting on Igor went well. 
I keep hearing from other animators that white painting is a drag and is the worst part of the process. And sure, I don't enjoy it either, but anything's a whale of a time after having experienced retapologizing and Blender's usual bullcrap. Oh, speak of the devil. Igor's tongue was a pain to deal with. Seeing how fine baking the textures on the body was a breeze, I thought that Blender had in fact changed. But oh, how wrong I was. But dang, the tongue is much smaller than the body, so that means the textures are too. So why was it a pain? Well, dear viewer, that's because Blender is a piece of crap on baking textures. Basically, Blender will only bake textures properly when it feels like it. If it doesn't, it does a crap job of it and moves on. Come on, Blender. <laughs> yeah. After buying a new laptop, don't ever mistreat a computer by the way, I discovered that by just scaling up both models, Blender will finally get off its lazy ass and will bake the textures properly for you. And, well, we're done, and it's on to the glamour shots. Ah, nothing beats the feeling of finishing another video. Ah, sorry, this is the first video of many of me making cool things that you will probably enjoy. Uh, that's it, have a lovely day, and bye.